23. Alex, we come to verse 23, and I, I want you to see if you notice something that I noticed and see if you would, it's not to, we've had it discussed quite a bit uh, lately about the security of the believer, but notice these words. He says, and then I'll declare to them, I never knew you. He didn't say, I knew you when you were doing these good things. He said, I never knew you. There was never a time when you and I were in this knowing relationship. And it lets us know that just because we look at someone who is observing uh, a quality of life in a life maybe of discipline, you know, of doing certain things uh, that looks like he's doing it for the Lord. The Lord looks on the heart. Uh, and we were talking about Judas's carriot and him being there, and there's no doubt in my mind. Do you remember when he, they were in the upper room and they had participated in, in the Passover meal and they were instituted the Last Supper? And Jesus said, one of you will betray me. And not a single one of the other apostles says, I know who it is, it's Judas. I mean, he had done such a good job at making himself look good in front of his peers that no one suspected that Judas was the guy that would betray Christ. But yeah. Jesus knew it all along. I, that's sure. what I, I see that in verse 23. I never knew you at any time. Isn't that something? I mean, Judas fit, fit in so well that all the other disciples had to say, is it I? Is it I? And, you know, what, what's really shocking, friends, is, I mean, there are people in church, there are people that are involved in good, moral, civic uh, activities, even religious rituals, but the question is, have you been born again? Do you remember when Luke was writing the book of Acts, he wrote, uh, having had perfect understanding from above. And the word, the Greek word there, from above, is the word anothen. And, um, you know, when Jesus says in John 3, a man must be born again, the same word, the same word is used, yeah. born from above. And so there's nothing here on earth that you can do or earn or achieve uh, that can save you. You've got to be born again or literally born from above, made brand new. And that's, um, uh, if you want a relationship with Jesus, you admit that you're a sinner. You say, Lord, I admit I cannot save myself. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe Jesus died in my place. And, Lord, I receive that free gift. And, Lord, come into my life and save me. Lord, make my soul clean. I mean, you know, the, the words are not so much uh, what matters, but the sincerity. You can say it different ways, but you're calling on Jesus and Jesus alone to convert your soul and save you from your sins. And friend, we just would beg, the Bible says, examine yourselves, see if you are in the faith. Remember back in Genesis 6, God warned, my spirit will not strive with man forever. Bert, let me ask you this. Is it possible to cross a line and God has called and God has beckoned and God has made overtures and you've, you've rejected God for the final time? I mean, is it possible that somebody could hear the gospel one day and still be within the window of opportunity and procrastinate one more time and just be uh, beyond the point of no return? There has to be, according to the passages in First John and other places. And, and again, I, I, I am using Judas's carry purposely. I can imagine this being that line that Judas is carrot steps uh, is carry it steps over Alex where he heard these words he ignored these words and and God you know he was pleading for him and he deliberately stepped over that line and saying I am going my way uh, I believe it can happen deliberately but also I think it can happen to a person who hardens their heart by putting things off we call it procrastination you know and yeah. saying no no and they say no so many times that their heart is hardened to the point of of i you know that the holy spirit just doesn't get through any longer the word of god doesn't penetrate that shell that they put in around them so you say well i don't believe that listen if 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 alex and i are wrong about this uh I still want to share with you the Bible so it makes it plain, doesn't Alex, that today is the day of salvation. Uh, if you're feeling God calling you, you feel God's presence and him convicting you of, of sin, 
you need to respond today because there's no assurance of living tomorrow. That's that's for sure. There's no assurance in that. But also you have no assurance that God's going to come and convict you again. You better get right with God. And the Bible says you need to do it now, doesn't it? Well, yes. And let me say, if you're, friend, if you're thinking about your relationship with God and you're beginning to think that, you know, maybe you need to get right with the Lord, let me tell you, that that's the Holy Spirit of God calling you. Because the Bible talks about this evil triumvirate, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And if you're desiring God, it's not the world, and it's certainly not your fallen sinful nature, and it's certainly not the devil. If you're hungering for God, that's because the Holy Spirit is, is drawing you, and you need to act on that. And you need to call on the name of the Lord. You know, Bert, there was a great preacher years ago, and it was my privilege when I was a student at Liberty. He was quite elderly, but I heard him in person. His name was J. Harold Smith. And he was on the radio for like 70 years, I think. He's with God now. But he had a message called God's Three Deadlines. Have you ever heard that? I have. I heard him preach it one time myself as well. Yeah, and I'm telling you, he preached, and, and there were so many who accepted Christ. So, my dear friend, two things. One, if you know the Lord, praise God. We'll pray for those who don't know the Lord and make it your mission to try to be a, a personal participant in the Great Commission, helping somebody come to Christ. But, friend, if you've got a question about your salvation, then by all means, do not be, friend, we, we would beg, don't be one of these who one day hears the Lord say, I, I never knew you. Mm. Today you can know him. And Christ concludes his Sermon on the Mount, and he says, look, if, you, if you'll open your heart to this salvation, uh, you're wise. The wisest thing you'll ever do is to make certain of where you stand with Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me show this, and it's jumping ahead a little bit, and we don't know exactly if we'll get through today or tomorrow with this completely. I think we'll finish up tomorrow. But I do want to jump ahead a little bit and tie these up uh, a little bit, Alex. Look at verse 23. It says, I never knew you. And he says, depart from me. Keep that in mind. And then in verses 24, 25, 26, and 27, he gives the illustration about the two men who build their house, one on sand and one on the rock, and then their storms came. And the one who built his house upon the sand, listen to this in verse 27, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Notice this terminology that Jesus is trying to get into the hearts of those who are listening. He says, I'll say to them, depart from me. Great was the fall of it. He is doing everything he can to, to pierce through their imaginations, their minds, and the hearts to let them know to depart from God, to go an opposite way, to not to obey him, has great, great consequences. He'll say, depart from me. Those are horrible words. Get out of my... If I understood it right in the Greek, it says, get away from my presence. Don't even stay in my, in my presence. And then great was the fall of it. It's disastrous. It is defeating. And so Jesus is really painting the picture of those that do not follow him as something that is very, very harsh, isn't he? Absolutely. I mean, can you, can you imagine the, the horror the tragedy to hear Jesus, and, and I don't think he says this with joy or glee. I think he says it with a broken heart, but he says, essentially, go away. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. Now, now remember, these, these people at this judgment that get turned away, they were, they were religious. It's like uh, Vance Havner said of Nicodemus, Nicodemus had money, morals, and manners. But, but to reject truth is lawlessness. Now, I think about our nation, friends, where the gospel has been broadcast over radio stations 24-7 now for 100 years, and there are 340-some thousand churches, and there are Bibles in every hotel room, and we, we uh, the only nation that had more gospel in their very DNA was Israel itself. I mean, we were founded as a Christian nation, and yet we have rejected truth. We have so far gone down the pike of unbelief and apostasy, and God calls that rejection of truth lawlessness. Now, now, Bert, it's going to be a, a horrific day, isn't it, when so many stand there before Christ, and to their horror, he says in, in the final parting words, I never knew you. Friend, don't be one of those people who hears that. 
And you don't have to be. And again, if our words are not sufficient and you'd like to talk to someone, uh, again, we try to give this number quite often. It is triple eight need him. And there's people there who are waiting for you to call and they'll they'll help you, they will guide you, and they'll bring you to the truth of knowing who Jesus Christ is. Real quickly, we'll jump ahead just a little bit and give a teaser for tomorrow because I I the last two, we talked about this earlier. The latter part of chapter seven, twos are wild. You know, you have two ways, two trees, two animals, and, and and now you have two builders, Alex. You know, and you have two outcomes as well. But notice it says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, you remember that scripture. He would say again, and again, he who has ears, let him hear. Uh, right. we're, we're talking about two kinds of hearing now. Let, and, and I want to finish up on this because we've got people out there who are there. Hear our words, but are you really hearing what's being said? Yes, you can hear the physical words that Alex and I share. And more importantly than our words is the word of God that we have read. But then there's an inner hearing. There's the Holy Spirit speaking and he's drawing you. Uh, Alex, you know, there's something about hearing that voice that that the Holy Spirit speaks to people. And when he says, come unto me, all ye that are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I I really believe when the Holy Spirit uh, takes the word of God the way we've declared it today, and he brings it into these uh, individuals, uh, they need to open their heart and their mind to the spiritual ears and hear God's Holy Spirit speak to them, don't they? They really do. They really do. And, you know, like you said, the Bible says, don't be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And, you know, um, in Hebrews, there's a verse that says the word preached did not profit them. It, isn't that a sad thing? It is. That, that, that the word preached uh, didn't yield anything. So let the Word of God yield something. Let it bring you to Christ. You know, Scripture convicts, and uh, through the Spirit of God we're converted, and then we grow, and we're sanctified, and we're used by God. It's uh, life's greatest adventure. It is. And we want you to stay with us. We're, we're going to come back in just, uh, just a few moments and take your phone calls and your questions. But if you're looking for answers about the life that God's given you and and he's given you the opportunity to know him. We pray that you'll come to Christ today. We want you to call upon him while you can. And so we'll be back in just two minutes with more of Exploring the Word. <music> 